I told you you will be back and we are back again with the ground smith auto normalization. So sit back, relax and let's simplify. Given S a matrix, decompose S into Q, a set of autonormal vectors and R an upper triangular matrix. So we are supposed to decompose S here, this matrix X into an autonormal vector and then an upper triangular matrix. So we can deduce straightforward that S is equal to QR, where Q is a set of autonormal vectors and R is an upper triangular matrix. So how do we decompose S into an autonormal vector and then an upper triangular matrix? So this is how we go about it. We take S equals the set of autonormal vectors E1, E2, and E3 times the upper triangular matrix R, which is R11, R12, R13, R22, R23, and then R33. So we are supposed to convert or decompose the matrix S into this form, Q and then R. Q being the autonormal vectors and then R being the upper triangular matrix. So the first thing we do here is to, is to break this S matrix here into column vectors. So when I say column vectors, I mean we are going to take the individual columns from the matrix S. So the first column, which is V1, is going to be 1, negative 1, 3. Then the second column vector is going to be 3, 1, and then 4. Then the third column vector is going to be 3, 2, and 5. So remember, we are deriving these column vectors from the S matrix we were given, right? Okay. So now that we have derived our column vectors, how do we find the E values here and then the R values in the R, which is the upper triangular matrix? How do we find these values? So to go straight to the point, we are going to take E1 to be this, vector, this column vector V1 divided by the magnitude of this V1. As you go along, you get used to this. So we are going to take the column vector for, for V1 divided by the magnitude of this V1. And when we do our computations, we are going to get E1 to be this value here. So we took V1, which is 1, negative 1, and then 3 divided by the magnitude of u1. You know how you find magnitude of, um, of a vector? It's going to be the square root of the, the square of the individual elements added together. So I'm going to get the square root of 1 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 3 squared. And that will give me root of um, how do you call it? root 11. And then when I divide all the elements inside this here, if I divide 1 by root 11, negative 1 by root 11, and then 3 by root 11, I'm going to get the value I have here as E1. Alright, so now that we have established that we have the value in the S matrix here, E1. Now, how do we find some of the values of R? When we now know the value for E1. So if you look here, we want to find the value for R11. Remember, R11 is on the first column. Right, R11 is on the first column and this is on the first row. So to do that, we are going to say that R11 is the magnitude of the first column vector. We know R11 is on the first column. So R11 is the magnitude of the first column vector V1. And we know the first column vector, the magnitude of it is root 11. So that's going to be our value for R11. So now that we know the value for R11, we can go to where R11 is and then put the value for R11 over there. Next, we want to find the value for R12. Now you know that R12 is on the second column, but on the first row. On the second column by the first row. So to find R12, we are going to multiply the second column vector. You know, R12 is on the second column. So we take the second column vector, which is V2. And since R12 is on the first row, times the first E value, which is E1. So R12 is equal to the first column vector, because it's on the first, the, the second column vector, times the first E value. So R12 is equal to V2 times E1 over here. Again, R12 is equal to V2 times E1 because R12 is on the second column, so V2. And then since it's on the first row, times the first E value, which is E1. And when we do our calculation, we get R12 to be 4.2212. So you can go to where the R12 is and put this value over there. Next, you find the value for R13. Now you know that R13 is on the, also on the third column, but on the first row. So you're going to take the third column vector, which is V3, times the first 
times E1 because it's on the first row. So V3 times the E1 that we just found. We're going to get our R13 to be 4.8242. Alright, so now we've been able to find all the values for the first row, which is R11, R12, and then R3, R13. Because we know the value for E1. Now let's move on. Let's find the value for E2. Now, because R22 is on the main diagonal, finding for R22 and E2 is special. So we are going to use a formula. Say U2 equals V2 minus R12 E1. What does this whole thing mean? R122, sorry, R22 is on the second column, right? So you're going to take the second column vector V2 minus what is the value on top of the R22? We have R12. So we have V2 minus this R12, and the R12 is on the first row. So V2 minus R12 times E1. So R22 is on the second column. So the second column vector minus this R12, and R12 is on the first row, so times the E1. That's going to give us the U2. So when we do the computations, we get U2 to be this one. Now, we can find the value for E2. So E2 is equal to the U2 divided by the magnitude of the U2. And that's going to give us this value here when we do our calculations. Now, the real value for R22 is going to be the magnitude of that U2. So remember, the magnitude of V1 gave us R11. And then the magnitude of U2 here is also giving us the value for R22. Alright, so now we know the value for R22. Next, let's find the value for R23. To find the value for R23, R23 is on the third column. So we are going to take the third column vector. And R23 is also on the second row. So we take the third column vector times the second E value. So V3 times E2. When we do our calculations, we get 3.7185. So you see that when we are finding for R11, the magnitude of V1 gave us the value for R11. And the same thing here, the magnitude of U2 gave us the value for R22. Because these guys are on the main diagonal. And finding them is also very special. But for R23, R23 is not on the main diagonal, right? So finding for R23, and it is on the third column, we take the third column vector times, because it's on the second row, times the E2, right? That will give us the R23. So now that we know for all of these, except the R33, now let's find R33. Now remember, R33 is on the main diagonal, right? And it has certain values on top of it. You see the R22 has R12 on top of it, right? And it's on the main diagonal. So on the main diagonal, to find R33, we are going to use the U again. So we say U3 equals R33 is on the third column, right? So you're going to use the third column vector V3 minus... Now, what value is on top of the R33? We have R23. So you're going to take minus R23, and R23 is on the second row. So E2 minus another value is on top of it, R13. Now, R13 is on the first row. So times E1. That's going to be our formula. So as you can see here, we have V3 because the R33 is on the third column. So V3 minus R13E1. So this R13E1 minus this R23E2 because we said that R13 is on the first row and R23 is on the second row, right? So now that we know for U3, we can do our computations and then we find E3. So E3 is going to be U3 divided by the magnitude of U3. And when we do our computation, we get E3 to be this value over here. Now that we know for E3, we can find R33. And we said that R33 is on the main diagonal. So just to find it, it's going to be the magnitude of the U3, which is 0.94868. Alright, so now you can see that we found all our values. We found E1, E2, E3, and all the R values. So... When you do everything right, this should be your E values and this should be your R values. So let me just give an overview of it again. We were finding the value for E2. 
right and we said the e was v1 divided by v the magnitude of v1 so e1 is equal to the v1 divided by the magnitude of v1 and we said v1 is the first column vector and we found the value for e1 and then for to get r11 we just took the magnitude of v1 because r11 is on the main diagonal just the magnitude of the v1 right and we had r11 and we said r12 is not on the main diagonal but it's it's on the it's on the second column and not just on the second column it is also on the first row so we're going to take the sec second column vector times the first row so we take e1 so v2 times e1 and we find for r12 and again for r13 r13 is on the second sorry it's on the third column so r13 is going to be the third column vector times it being on the first row e1 that will give us r13 right and then for r22 we said r22 is on the main diagonal and it has a value on top of it right there's a value on top of it here. it's also on the main diagonal so finding for it is very special so we use the u2 and we said because r22 is on the it's on the main diagonal it's, on, it's also on the on the on the second column we are going to take the second column vector v2 minus the value on top of it is r12 and r12 is on the first row so e1 so v2 minus r12 e1 and we find for u2 and having u2 we can find e2 to be u2 divided by magnitude of u2 and when we find e2 because r22 is on the main diagonal just the magnitude of u2 should give us the value for r22 and we did just that and when we found for r22 we said the next one was r23 r23 is not on the main diagonal but it's on it's on the third column so we take the third column vector times it being on the second row times e2 will give us the magnitude for r23 and then lastly r33 is on the main diagonal so finding for it is special so we take u3 equals we know r33 is on the third column so the third column vector v3 minus the values on top of it what values on top of it we have r23 here so r23 minus r23 and r23 is on the second row so e2 minus r13 r13 is on the is is on the first row so e1 then we find u3 equals v3 minus r13 e1 minus r23 e2 that will give us u3 and to find e3 we take the u3 over the magnitude of the u3 right and we get the value for e3 and we say because it's on the main diagonal just the magnitude of u3 will give us the value for r33 and then we find our values and then when you find put the values inside and then you get you decompose s in the grand smith autonormalization so friends that's it i've been talking too much if you have any question leave it in the comment section don't forget to like and subscribe until next time a party